Michael Logan from the Bureau of Meteorology. Um, two days out from the race, you've given us two lots of uh, scenarios now. Uh, how many more are we going to get before uh, the race starts? I oh, know that scenario for the first particularly 12 to 24 hours is pretty settled so it really does look like the race will start in building northeasterly winds and then the first evening the fleet's going to get hit by what will be very gusty southerly change, uh, 25 to 35 knots and that's going to make for some quite rough conditions particularly on that first night of the race. Now, as we head beyond that what's going to be crucial is how slow, how fast those winds actually begin to moderate particularly Sunday and then into Monday. So conditions will start to be, you know, there'll be gale force, gale warnings out for that first night and the conditions will moderate beyond that and then it's just a matter of how light the winds get, particularly uh, as the boats get right across Bass Strait and down well, into Ken, the... Well, uh, Ken, it's been 12 months since you were here last. Yeah. Uh, a bit of deja vu as far as that weather forecast is concerned? It, it, unfortunately, a little bit of deja vu, but I am a firm believer that uh, I, I haven't even really studied the forecast yet. I, I think... What the, the internet hype that's been created for the past week is great for everybody else, but I have kind of refused to get caught up in it, and uh, I'll start looking at it with Stan tonight, probably 36 hours out. Yeah. Um, and really, the only reason we look at the weather is to make some final sale call, calls. Uh, what are we going to do for spare parts? Um, you know, sometimes if it's a really light forecast, we might even drop some crew. So it's really... Uh, it, it, you know, the weather's going to be, it is what it is. You know, I saw Ian Murray said, you know, he, he thought we should postpone in that big breeze the other day. <laughs> I think we should postpone now because I hear it's going to be too light. So we should, we should wait for a little more weather. <laughs> well, it has got to be two ways to it, isn't exactly, it? Yeah. Exactly. Look, uh, all these businesses have been talking about all these modifications you've done to the boat. Yeah. What exactly have you done? Uh, the boat is lighter, uh, it's deeper, it's got a different bulb, it's got more water ballast, uh, it's got more rake, it's got improved sails, um, you know, lighter, stiffer, hopefully faster. And every, you know, what we've really tried to do is tick the boxes uh, to not slow it down in another box. So it's one thing to make it faster here, but can we do that with avoiding getting slower there? And for sure, the Achilles heel of this boat is the lighter the breeze, the tougher it is. And uh, you know, we've tried to lighten the boat as much as we possibly can. Uh, keep the writing moment and, and uh, so not to give up the breezier stuff and so far so good. Feels good. Boat feels great. Mate, uh, you've got the record between the starting line and the boy in the middle of the heads. Four minutes 35. Yeah. Uh, we had one take of that last year which is sensational to look at again and again on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, can we rate this record? Can you do it under? No, under I think it's going to be the wrong wind <laughs> direction unfortunately. Uh, I, I don't know if we could get down the harbor faster than we did last year. It was the right, sa the right sails, it was the right angle, uh, breeze stayed in the whole time, never got light. Um, that was fun, but I tell you what, that was fun, but let's now add on the other 625 miles or whatever it is to, uh, let, let, let's, let's continue on. It's one thing to be, to have the record in the harbor, but let's, let's start looking further down the road towards uh, the Tasmania. So you all uh, geared up with all your sails, etc. Yeah, we, we're ready to go. The guys are doing some last-minute checks today. Um, mm -hmm. We've been sailing just about every day for the last six, seven days here. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we have an amazing shore team that takes care of this boat. Uh, Tim Hackett, Casey Smith, and their whole team. Uh, so we're very comfortable with our boat, with our surroundings. Uh, it's pretty much almost identical crew from what we had last time. Uh, in, we've we've had the same people right through the year. Uh, so yeah, I, I so what you asked me what else would you do, and I, I honestly don't know. I think we're as prepared as we ever will be. We just need the weather to cooperate. You uh, you broke the record, didn't you, for the uh, distance sailed in 24 hours? Correct. What was the average speed during that time? Uh, it was 26 and a half. 26 and, and a half. And that wasn't That's even, you know, if we could have hardened up 10 degrees, uh, yeah. you know, we were racing, so yeah. it was it was kind of VMG running in 25, 30 knots of breeze. So. This boat can do, you know. It, what what it, did you actually? What was your top speed? I think it was 35, 36, or something like that. And and you know, it wasn't that windy, and it wasn't that crazy. It was just kind of sailing, and that's what this boat can do. You know, give it give it a chance, and this boat can do special things, which is what makes it so fun to sail. It's just a big dinghy. And you know, last time when we were here, 
we were pretty intimidated by this new creation, and I think the difference is after a year under our belt, we treat it just like another boat. It's like going and sailing your laser off the dock and uh, on a Tuesday night. So, so it's more familiar now, yeah. Oh, yeah, and, and we trust the boat, and I think the boat trusts us a little bit more, and, um, you know, hopefully weather cooperating, we can do some good things. Good luck. Thank you.